Chip Master with another video. Alright, I have here an Acer Aspire old school. Alright, as you know, can you see? Alright, so you know the regular Acer Aspire. Alright, uh, complain is not displaying the bay. Let's see if I can carry over the camera a little bit more here. All right, so uh, let me see if we can zoom, zoom this in, options, capture filter, zoom, 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 all right, all right, so complaints not displaying, so let's take a look at the current and uh, we're going to plug in the charger now. Alright, so as you can see, the current goes up to 0.42. Alright, turn it off. On again, 0.3. And then back, I'm gonna press the switch. You know it's on, and the current is 0 0.2. So most likely, oh, it dropped to 1, 0.15, so it's 1500 milliamp. So basically, I'm not getting maybe run supplies. I miss poor good signal most time. Oh, oh, it gone up to 0.54. But, uh, oh, shut off. Let me turn it on. Alright, so it's on. Alright, point was the point two point one five and there's no image on the screen. And then it goes to point five oh powers down. Or oh sorry. Oh it powers on by itself again. And the current goes to point two for about a few more seconds and then it goes to one point two and powers down. And it powers on by itself again and keep doing the same thing. It goes to point 0.2, then point 0.515, then oh, uh, no, it's at point 0.57, point 0.4, and then it powers down. So keep doing the same thing. Alright, so I'm gonna take this apart and see what we get. Alright, so give me a minute. Alright, so I'm back and I, oops, my camera here is out. Let's see what's the issue. Uh -huh. uh, let me see if I can get it on. Frozen. Not responding. Ah, uh, well. What? Okay. Uh, let me try again. Alright, switch cameras. Nope, nothing. This one is already occupied. Let's try again. Alright, let me close. Ha ha ha. Alright, please make sure blah blah blah. Let me reopen. This one again. Come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Uh. Oh boy. This check device. Uh, I have this one. It's not lighting up, let me see if I can plug it up. I'll be back. Okay, so I have here the board. Oh, it's even to the board. Huh. Alright, so I have here the board. And uh, let me see if I can zoom in some more. Okay. Right. Alright, so. Um, Zoom in too much. Um, zoom in a little bit. How about that? Alright, good. So I have the meter here. So I'm going to check all coils for shorting. 
All right, so I'm, t I'm starting off with the charger section. All right, uh, oops. Start off with the whoops, with the charger section, and I get uh, 512. And I'm going down to 3 volt and 5 volt section now. All right, I get 381. Next coil, 51, which is normal. All right, bus power supply, 1.05 volts. Not bad. All right, RAM supply. 143 ohms, yes. Uh, GFX core, I get 15. All right, CPU core, I get uh, 9. All right, another core. Well, it's connected in series, so it's the same. All right, and I have here a uh, bus power supply, 16. All right, I have here phase lock loop, 1.8 volt. Beautiful, no power, no fault. Let's check the 19 volt rail. All right. Common point rail, and I'm checking out the current adapter current says to resistor, and I get 465. So there's no fault. So I'm just gonna plug in the charger now. Alright, I'm looking at the current, I'm taking the 100 milliamp. Alright, so I'm going to strike the button again and see what I get. So let me just turn it on. Alright, so it's on. Fan spins, but the current is so small. The fan spins and the light is going on and off. Yeah. And it's trying to turn on, but looking at the current here. Uh, let's check if RAM supply is coming. Oops. Let's check if I'm getting RAM supply. Check if I'm getting the RAM supply or not. Oh, no, Alright, on again. Alright, my current is 0.4. Turning on again. Let me get the switch. All right, so I'm just connecting the switch for easy access so I can press the button at any given time all right oh my power is plugged out that's why all right so i press the switch i get lights as you can see current is 0.49 fan spins all right so let's check if i am getting oh i know what i'm gonna do this power adapter is too slack so let's go for the smaller one, I believe. I think this should work. Alright, so I press the switch. So I'm going to check all supplies. 0.5. Alright, check if CPU core it works. So I'm going to check if CPU core, core, core supplies there or not. Yes, 1.1 volt. Next supply. I get 1.1 volt, alright, uh, RAM supply, 1.49, okay, phase lock loop 1.8, beautiful, I'm getting 1.8, alright, 3 volts, of 5 and 3, beautiful, it's all there, so everything is coming so far, let's see if we're getting reset signal, and I'm getting PLT reset, right, but I'm not getting any display, anybody could tell me where the problem is, 
Alright, so <coughs> I just had my breakfast. Alright, so I'm getting all supplies. Supply reset on um PLT reset is there, all supplies there. And um no way. Not getting in this way. I'm just gonna connect the keyboard. But the current should be more than that still. Oh, could it be that the RAM is bad? I didn't try another RAM. I didn't try. But the technician. So we should check the RAM. Alright, so I'm turning on again. Current is 0.56. I'm not getting in the display, there's no caps lock. No oh, num lock. Alright, just out of curiosity, let me just try another round. Right on, current is point fix. You see. Alright, could it be the BIOS is corrupted? And it's not turning off. Let me see if it's gonna turn off. And it's 0.48. We're gonna check also if the RAM is reading. <coughs> Let's check run supply. If run supply is coming on. Or not. Supply. All right, we have QU21. Oh, it's power down. All right, so I have three pants, three ball all on the in the drains. All right, power put. It's off. Let's wait again for it to turn on. One point three point three. All right, five volt now. All right, for a five volt. Let's check the output. 5 volt output. Everything is fine. Alright, so what I notice since I put this RAM in, it's powering off, powering on, powering off. Let me try without RAM. The current without RAM is the same. Oh, the current increased to 4.48 as you can see. Power's down. Alright, 0.45 and power's down. Same thing without RAM. I see a small corrosion right here. And there's a small corrosion right here. Uh, right here. Some little white stuff there. Let me just clear that. That's water. Let's see what we get. We just dry it. Alright. Alright, give it some good power. Let me zoom out a bit. I can't get to see some of the sections of the Alright, so I'm gonna press the switch now. Alright, my current is same. Alright, let me put the RAM in. The RAM is back in. Press the switch. <coughs> current is 0.5, was 0.4, and it's not pouring down. Alright, we want to check and see if we're getting uh, the RAM. And if you notice, since I put back this RAM, the current the machine doesn't power it off. It's still on. Anyway, we want to check the oscilloscope. Let's see if 
we can get this dude to focus on the uh, slitless so, Alright, so I'm going to check if the RAM is reading. So, pin 200 clock data. Oh, sorry, pin 202 clock, pin 200 data. Alright, so it's on the right side. So, we're going to check if we're getting the RAM reading. Alright, so I'm going to press the switch. Oh, I'm on single trigger. Alright, so let me just remove it from single to normal. Alright, so I'm gonna one, two, pin two hundred and two clock. Take a look. Oops, I didn't connect the ground. Again. Pin two hundred. Pressing the switch. And I am not getting the RAM. There is no RAM. There is no RAM. Could be that CPU has setting adjusting instructions. So there is no RAM on there. No RAM reading. First, flash the BIOS. Normally, when this RAM doesn't read, flash the BIOS. If it's not flash, it's not reading. Then replace the PCH. Last, replace the CPU. All right. So let's go again. Pin 200 this time. And there's no response. Oh, I'm on rising edge. But regardless, it should at least try to turn on. It should at least tr capture the signal. Alright. Regardless. And we still didn't get anything. Alright. Still didn't get anything. So let me check the working conditions of the RAM. First, before I flash the BIOS. Alright, so first. Alright, so the pull-ups for this um, SM bus is 3.3 volts. Oh, God. So, oops, my camera fell. <laughs> okay. Alright, so we're going back to the multimeter. here so when I'm checking I can capture signals I'm gonna put the meter right here it should yeah well you still cancel the board oh, I should put the meter on this side <laughs> uh, Alright, all right, so I'm going to check SM bus. So let me go for the schematic just for reference. Uh, it's 6901P. Alright, so it's LA 6901. Alright, <coughs> well, I already did a video for this, no power. Alright, so let's go to the RAM section. The RAM section is JDIM. That's J E I M. Alright. And here we go. So J D M1. This is J D M2. I'm not J D M1, doesn't matter. Where is the next slot? Oh, it's on the next page. So here's J D M1. And First, I'm going to check the pull-ups of SMB bus clock and data if we're getting 3.3 volts there. Uh, see, pin. Uh, this schematic doesn't line up the pins. So it's pin 200 and pin 202 clock and data, and it's mixed up. So if you don't know what you're doing, this schematic will mess you up. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to check pin 202, pin 200. See if we're getting what we need to get we just expand the screen a little bit bigger so we can oh it's a bit slanted 
Oh, super. Let me carry my thing a little bit. Alright. I'm gonna turn it on now. Alright, so. Make the next camera on the DC power supply. I'm gonna press the switch. Alright, give power. Alright, so the current is the same, fan spins, everything. We got all supplies. Now I'm gonna check if I'm getting ramp pull ups, pin 200. I'm getting 1.8. Is that normal? Pin 202. 1.8. It should be 3.3 volts. Ha ha ha. So this should be 3.3 volts. Alright, let's check pin number one, which is RAM termination, bus power supply. If that voltage is abnormal, then we have freeze up, the screen will freeze, laptop freeze. We have 0.74, beautiful. Pin 199, SPD chip, 3.3 uh, volts. The SPD chip for the BIOS, pin 199. Uh, pin 204, pin 203, pin 202, pin 201, 1.8, this should be 3.3, so the bio strip on the RAM chip is still not getting enough supply, so let's backtrack and see where this voltage is coming from, so let's go back to the schematic, so you see, you should check your working conditions. Some guys would run and go and flash the BIOS and you don't check your working conditions. That's not why you repair a motherboard. You don't just flash BIOS, you confirm first. All right, so SMB bus data, SMB bus clock, and pin 199, which is the SPD, VDD, SPDC, pin 199, which is um, plus three volt, and that plus three volt is our fault. So therefore, I have a fault on my run supply. Normally, for SMB class clock and data, it is connected to an isolated MOSFET. Secure. Oh man, it's connected to an isolated MOSFET, right? D underscore C K, right? Underscore S D A T A. All right. So let me go through one by one. All right. So that's not there. That's not there. All right. So here's the isolation MOSFET. So it's Q40 and it's pulled up by three volt. When the PC is sent SMB data, this is a P mark N channel MOSFET, this 3 volt should conduct. So therefore this MOSFET is not conducting. Right, so this MOSFET is not safe for the DDR. So PCH send the, the SM bus clock and data signals. Then this 3 volt comes to this gate. This is an N channel. It will conduct and becomes D underscore C T underscore S data and send to the RAM slot. Same for this one below. So we're going to look for Q40A, Q40. So I'm gonna go back to this to the schematic to the board. And I'm gonna look for Q40A. <coughs> Alright, Q40. 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 Uh -huh. And that's a six leg MOSFET, I believe. Q40. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it's a six legged MOSFET. That's Q25. That has a little corrosion. Q40, 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 Q40. Ah, uh, this MOSFET here is uh, Q40A, Q40, it's twin one. Uh -huh. It's a twin one MOSFET. Alright, so Q40, six leg, six leg, six leg. Let me find that six leg. Q19. <laughs> There's no board view. <laughs> Q40, where are you? You're not conducting. Q40. Q39. Oh, it's over here. So you have Q39. Oh, here is Q40. Found it. It's right here. Alright, so we're gonna check the gate. If we're getting three volts at the gate. Alright, so three volts is controlled by this three volts is controlled by SLPS3. 
and then into, the, into SLPS0, into S0 state. All right. All right, so I give power. I give power. And it's on. And let's check Q40. Uh, pin number 215. So 2 and 5, right? It should have 3 volts. Pin number 2. Something why it's not turning on now. Why it's not turning on? And I'm getting 1.8. Pin number 5. Also 1.8. So my SLPS3 is not running properly. So we need to check SLPS3. Uh, SLPS3 for switch voltage is controlled by uh, just to save time. This is controlled by U21. Let's check U21 on the schematic. U21. <coughs> I hear this. So 3 volt RS2, 3 volt S. So we need to check the gate of this MOSFET. So plus VSV coming through this 447k resistor, pulling it down to about 13 volts, and then it will become plus 3 volt run. Alright, and it is controlled by sus P. So in sus P this is low level of sus P. This will cut off and then this 19 volts will flow through this resistor and then it will come up to the gate. Right. So U21, let's check the gate. Let's check the gate of U21. Alright. So U21 gate. Alright, so U21. I have Three volt, no three volt. Oh, there it is. So we have three volt here, All right? And the source, <laughs> and the source, one point eight. So there's my fault. And the gate is zero point two. I should have thirteen volts here. So the water did mess up something here. Here's my seventeen volts. All right, drop to one volt. So this is should this should be the forty seven ohm. So this is should be R three sixty eight. R368 is coming to the gate of this MOSFET PUQ25D. Pin number 5 should be 0 volts. Can see pin 1. Let me get one Let's See if I can see anything. My chair is sinking and I can't use this. I need to get rid of this chair today. Alright, so I'm under the scope now. So pin number. Pin number 5 should be 0 volts. Beautiful. Alright, and uh, pin number 5 is 0 volts, so it should cut off. So this is the R368. Alright, so I'm getting no volt on that side. And this side is giving me 7, 18 volts. So that pole should come to the gate. And I'm getting 0 volts. Let's check this resistance if it is open or not. Alright, so I'll go to the resistance mode. I should get 47 kilo ohm. And I'm checking. And I am not getting a reading. So it's open, you see? No reading. So this is my fault. This is the fault. 
why we are not getting any any resistance at all no reading it tries to read it's in mega ohms kilo oh i'm getting 47 kilo ohm so it actually reads so the 47 kilo ohm is there the 47 kilo ohm is there look I get 47 kilo ohm. But the voltage is not passing through. So could it be that the gate? Could it be that P2? Could it be that Q25 is leaking on the gate pin? I'm on again. Alright, so let's check this side. I get 19 volts on this side. Oh, on the next side, I get 1.2 blah blah blah. Alright, so I'm just, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a tiny wire. I'm gonna run a tiny little wire. Nope, I didn't. So I need some 020147K resistors. So let me add that to my card list. These are all 0402 resistors. take this off another board let me pause okay so I found one so I'm just gonna add it to the board now all right so I'm just gonna add the plus here to hold it as it don't go away <laughs> going to blow my 
current should increase. My current should increase now when I turn this on. Let's take a look at the current. Alright, so I'm gonna give power. Oh, everything dragged out. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna press the switch now. Take a look at the current. And it's still the same. Nothing changed. <laughs> oh god. Alright, let's measure. Uh, for the voltages on this thing. And I'm getting 3.3 .3 volts now. Could you believe it? Let's check 5 volts. Again. Yeah, 5 volts output. Yes, I'm now getting 3. I was getting 1.8 here. And the gate now is 18 volts. Very good. And uh, let's check if we're getting 3.3 volts at the RAM slot. Ah, oh boy, this one is tricky. But it's good to get a challenge. Alright, so let's check the RAM slot now. If we're getting 3.3 volts. Yes, and I get 3.3 volts. Oh, I see why the RAM is the same. I didn't have the RAM in. <laughs> I didn't have the RAM in. That's why the current didn't move. Now let's take a look at the oscilloscope now to see if we're getting reading on the RAM. Alright, if the oscilloscope, if the, if the PCPU is working and initializing the PCH, is this right? I'm seeing this upside down or something. Alright, so let's take a look now. I should be able to fix this thing. I should be able to fix this. It should be working now. Alright, so pin 202. Alright, I press the switch. Oh, it's plugged out. Alright, so pin 202 clock take a look hey and we have clock and it's reading and it's passing the ram as you can see i'll take a look at the current it's now 0 0.7 0 0.8 and that's a done 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 repair yay <laughs> let's check if we're getting this way if it's uh if the USB ports are initialized and getting its display. <coughs> uh. Yes, indeed. And there we have caps lock. Let me turn off the light. It's bright. Alright, there we go. I have caps lock. Alright, so I have no lock here. Both of them are there. See? And that's a repair. So you see, flashing the BIOS wouldn't solve the problem. And you go and flash the BIOS and that's not working. So let me put it together. All right, so I've put it together. So let's test it now. <coughs> okay. All right, so the current should go all the way up to about 1.5, 1.6, blah, blah, blah. Alright, so I press the switch. Alright, so it's point one point right one point two Windows display and then we have starting windows. Alright, so that's a done repair. Alright then, so uh, thank you and uh, hope you learn and don't flash the BIOS at all time. Make sure you confirm first before you flash in the BIOS. Alright.